For 12 years, Hoffa has promised to restore the power of the union, and we have done nothing but go backwards. Uh, we have lost thousands of members, thousands of un good union jobs. We're not organizing companies that are uh, going up against our union competition, and, um, and we're not, the members don't have faith that the union is backing them up. I can, I've been campaigning for the last few months with UPS members, with members in freight, food warehouses, offices, factories, and universally people are angry. They're angry that the union is not fighting back. They think that at UPS, here is a company that is making millions of dollars, millions and millions, and we gave concessions, and we're letting management harass the hell out of people, fire people right and left, the, um, and it's months before grievances are resolved. We have good issues to go after UPS with grievances at the national level, and they're not doing it. They're kicking it back to the locals and leaving locals to fend for themselves. And uh, we have the power to do it, and we need to, to give UPS a big public punch in the nose on 9-5 grievances, on the overtime grievances, on uh, the fact that they haven't created the full-time jobs that they said they were going to. There's a number of different things. And we need to, uh, in, in freight as well, we're not even enforcing the contracts that, the contracts that we have. There's black and white language that the companies signed. And if they signed it, they've got to be held to it. And that goes for every contract that we have. So just because we're in bad economic times doesn't mean that we should not make the company live up to the contract that they sign. So whether it's New Penn or Holland or YRC, uh, ABF, whoever it is, we've got to enforce the contract. And we've got to do it in a coordinated way. The locals need to be working together. We need to be getting people together to say, this is a type of attack that's going on. This is how we're going to fight back. And in many cases, we can anticipate what the attack is going to be on us. And we should be ahead of the game instead of waiting until we're getting smashed or we're getting uh, notices of uh, closures or whatever it might be. So whether it's freight, UPS, or in the food industry, for example, we need to be smart and, and think about what, uh, what the management is looking to do and we need to get people together and involve the members in fighting back. And that's one of the biggest problems I see with the Hoffa administration, is that they don't, they're afraid of the members. They're afraid of stewards. They're afraid of strong local officers. They don't want people involved. And that's the only way we're going to build enough power in this union to fight back effectively. We need to teach people. We need to teach stewards how to fight back. We need to train our business agents better. We need to arm people with information, um, and we need to have um, we need to have full um, disclosure of grievance decisions and um, put things up on the website. Information for people so that they can share, so they know what's going on around the country. There's no reason that we should keep people in the dark when we have the internet and we have so many ways that we can communicate with people at all different levels. And that's how we're going to get something done, only if we get all the members involved. I think that we have been relying on politicians way too much. We should not be throwing money at them. We've got to stop that. Instead, we need to educate the members about issues that are important to their well-being, such as taxes, Medicare, health care, pensions, all those different things. We need to educate people about it so that when they go to vote, that they are informed voters. We should not, we should be using that money to educate our members and organize them to vote and to be effective voters and understand what their self-interest is instead of giving it millions of dollars to politicians who abandon us. I came up through the ranks of the Teamsters. I was a truck driver under the Master Freight Agreement, and I worked on a dock. I know what it's like to live, work and live under those sorts of conditions. I came up through the ranks of my union. I went to meetings. I was a shop steward. I became an organizer. And Hoffa has done none of those things. 
and I think it's a very important perspective to have if you're going to lead a labor union. And I also know that what side I'm on, I'm not in the middle. I'm not a lawyer that's trying to figure out a compromise position. I'm on the side of the members, and that's where the leader of our union should be. And I also think that the companies are getting away with murder. And um, so my experience of, of coming up through this way is that I've, I've learned through my experience in bargaining contracts, in, uh, whether they're small contracts or large contracts like with Costco or big supermarket chains, that you cannot expect management ever to do anything nice to you. They aren't. They only are going to respond to pressure. And that's what we have to do. We have to put pressure on them and we have to organize people. I'm not afraid of the members. I come out through the, from the rank and file. I've done every job there is to do in this union. And that's why the, the difference between me and Hoffa is that I'm willing to work with the members. I know what kind of power can, can be used. I've been on strike. I've organized strikes. I've uh, taught classes. I've, I've organized new members. And I've also worked in coalitions. I want to build solidarity with other people, uh, with other unions and with other organizations. So all those things are what I bring to the table here that I think is going to be necessary to change this union around.